damaged again, and they cost 4 movement, so you really don't want to move into storms if you can help it. When you're moving your ships around in with the people, I found that sometimes if you're moving long distances, the AI will just be like, oh, I'm just ending my turn, I might as well just end my turn in a forward movement location. And then that's really bad because you get damaged by the storm twice because you move into it and you get damaged, you end the turn, you start in it, you get damaged again. So in my experience, you kind of want to avoid automated movement of the, like the ships. Unless you just want to accept occasionally getting damaged and spending like a couple of turns repairing. Which is not really that big big of a deal, but unless you're playing on one of the longer speeds, it can kind of be a bit of a big deal. So let's drop off our people here. Let's get the farmer doing his thing over here. Producing six food. Very good. We're up to plus six food now. And settlers, by the way, they require food, lumber, horses, and tools. We do need less of each one of these resources because we're George Washington. We need 45 tools, we need 45 horses, we need 67 wood, and we need 67 food. So until you can get those resources growing in your colonies, you're going to be dependent on imports even to start settling other colonies in this mod. Now we do have this guy that has nothing else to do, the cabinet cabinet maker he can't do his job specifically what I'm gonna have him do is produce more hammers instead we won't be able to keep up in terms of lumber but I want to get as many political points now as I can and I'll just have to probably switch that guy around from time to time and that will have to do so now we've got the question of what we do with the caravel we could go straight back with whatever resources that we have on hand which is gonna be the 52 sugar I'm not gonna sell my military resources I need those for a defender Otherwise, I'd have to spend a lot of money. And what I'm going to do with this caravel is I'm going to actually go explore a little bit close to the shipping lanes so that if I find enough gold to, say, buy a person and some provisions, I'll do that because I really want to start scouting ASAP. But we're going to assume that we're not going to go back to Europe immediately. We'll take a couple turns just to look around. There's so many friggin' orcas in the water, holy crap. I wonder how far away from like the mainland this actual island is. And there is a reason to actually go along the sea lanes as well. Which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have this thing not ask me every single time so that I can just do this. And I can explore, looking around for it. that's what I wanted right there. Shipwrecks. So these can give you gold or they can give you experience for your ship in most cases. I think there might be some other small chance events related to them though. Sadly there was actually a shipwreck that when I found it, a proper shipwreck that when I found it at the Pearly Gates, it popped that goodie hut, but it didn't get the indentured servant that you usually get. Alright, we got 219 gold, so we have 408 gold now. If I were to sell this sugar, that would give me 260 gold. By the way, there's also the market of Africa here where you can buy slaves, and slaves have a whole economy associated with them. They have a bunch of units that uh, slave hunters here, they make them less like a runaway. Slave overseers increase their production. I think that these also apply to anything that's not free. So like African slaves, native slaves, mulattoes are free. I think indentured servants are free, but indentured servants might have their runaway lowered by slave hunter, maybe. Here you can also buy slave barks, which have 5 cargo space, but they cost 9,000 gold. They do have the benefit of being able to sail to the third market, which is Port Royal. They can also only carry goods or slaves. So let's check out Port Royal. And we can't actually interact with this because we don't have anybody here at this exact moment. But this is a location that you like buy pirate ships, basically smuggler ships, that kind of thing. Let's see here. So with selling the sugar in Europe, we would get 668 gold. That is not enough for the provisions that I need. So let's go ahead and let's do some exploration towards the west and see if we can't find ourselves another shipwreck for some goodies. Let's actually check the western side of our little island here too. There's bound to be something in the water and I want to see if there's any land like anywhere close to nearby because we're going to need to start thinking about developing other settler locations very soon and we need to find the freaking mainland 
By the way, if you start seeing these blue things in the water, they are indicative of coral reefs. So let's turn on the grid here. So there's a coral reef uh, here, one southwest of us. And it's hard to tell exactly where they're at in the mod, which is kind of annoying. But at least they did reduce the prevalence of reefs in the map script. Unfortunately, we're not finding anything good around here, which is interesting. I might do a little swing around to the southeast and then go pick up some more sugar. There we go. Uh, we discovered a map. Mm. So there's more ceiling here, which means that there's some more land down here. I'd like to go pick up that shipwreck over there, but right now we have available 20 sugar, which would not sell for that much money. Let's go ahead, let's go check out that shipwreck over there. I really want to get an experience boost on the caravel because there are promotions for the ships that give them more movement speed, and movement speed is such a big deal. Like the faster you are, the more it is, the easier it is to outrun pirates and such, for instance. Oh, hmm, let's check. Let's go into the unfavorable wind. The easier it is to outrun pirates and the easier it is to get to and from Europe or to go exploring. Ah, there we go. We got the experience points. So let's get navigation one for plus one visibility range and movement range. That's very good. And then navigation two for plus one movement range. Now we've found some actual mainland. Very cool. So we've got some marsh here. We've got some mineral min mineral resources for ore. We've got a bunch of timber here for lumber. Some more savanna for growing sugarcane. Yeah, this will be an interesting location. Let's pick up the shipwreck, and we just go to another map. All right, let's see here. Some cows, very interesting. I have not yet done cows, so we might get around to doing that. I'd like to check out, I guess, that shipwreck right there, because I want to get as much gold as I can get. I really want to get another person and enough provisions for somebody to start scouting. And we also got really lucky with the location of our sea resources on our little island here because all the resources that we could access without being on the complete other side of the island, which would be the shrimp, are within range of our first settle right here. So this island is like perfect. Uh, we've got some more experience on the caravel. Kind of thinking that we need to head back soon because we've got to pick up the next person. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's head on back to Europe. Which is kind of weird. It's kind of weird that there's like a Europe sea lane, sea, lone, sea lane right here, in between the island and the regular mainland. But that's how it shook out. I'm gonna have the cabinet maker go back and forth on lumber production. I think that's gonna be the best way to actually generate political points. We did reach a point where he wasn't actually effectively doing anything because there wasn't enough lumber being produced at all. I think he was producing like one hammer out of a potential two more that he was adding. Looks like that master powder maker decided to immigrate to our colonies, and we've gotten a challenge to find the Pacific Ocean, basically. Several scholars in Europe declare that the Earth is a globe. Adventurers and explorers from all nations have set sail to find the western route to Asia. Hurry up, men. We'll be the first to discover the route to Asia. Well, we'll see about that. If we find the Pacific Ocean, we'll get glory and wealth. Let's go ahead, let's offload the sugar. We could hurry one of these people, but I don't think that's what I want to do. I'd rather save up. So let's grab the master powder maker. And I can't grab all the provisions that I want at the moment. Provisions, by the way, are what used to be called bakery goods. And they're made from rice, barley, or cassava. Barley, I think, comes from plains. Rice comes from wetlands, possibly. Maybe marsh. And then cassava is like a... Um, I think it's like a jungle-ish thing. I'm not sure exactly. I haven't done cassava yet. I have done rice and barley though. I kind of think I want to go ahead and buy as many of these provisions as I currently can. We need 60, but we don't have the money for all of them. So let's buy 51, which should be the maximum that we can select at the moment. We don't really need like a whole bunch more people in the colony. They're not going to be that useful at the moment. Like, not useful, not useful in a very short-term thing. Like, we could grow the horses, but that'll take longer, and I'd rather get a proper rancher on that as soon as possible. The horses are also on a 
Uh, it is just a savanna, okay. But I don't think savanna naturally produces horses. So those horses aren't like a huge source of horses that are producing like four horses per turn or six horses per turn. Uh, savanna does apparently produce three horses per turn. Oh yes, the horse production is based on the number of horses that you have available. So as your herd grows bigger, the number of horses that you can generate per tile can go up. I think it's capped by something, but I don't know what the cap is. I might also I might also be wrong. There may not be a cap, but I th I'm pretty sure there is. So we could have somebody do horses, but we also need to generate food because food's freaking expensive in Europe. It costs like ten gold. So the more food that we make, the more settles, more settlers can, we can prepare more cheaply. So we have the first trade agreement. Your ship's captain puts a leather pouch bulging with gold coins on the counter of the trading house. The timid merchant does not bat an eyelid. For him, such transactions are as commonplace as the goose fat on his lunch sandwich. For your captain, on the other hand, they are a burden. The gold may no longer be his responsibility, but now he has to carry back the precious cargo. If a skull and crossbones flag appears on the horizon, the journey may have been in vain. Your ships do have chances to escape to dock if they get attacked and they lose. I think it depends on the size of the ship. I'm not sure though. So colonists at a recently founded city have materials left over from its construction. Some want to build a chapel, others want a tavern. Whatever we decide will make one party unhappy. So this is an interesting question. We could do the chapel and receive six turns of disorder. We could do the tavern and receive six turns of disorder. We could do the chapel is the only reasonable choice for the children of Christ, or the tavern is more important because they were helping the citizens closer together, or to avoid any arguments, the materials shall be confiscated and sold. I'd rather receive the money because I don't want any kind of delay between now and getting that first founding father, so let's take the money. Even though we do want to build a chapel eventually, I'd rather just build a chapel myself. And now we do actually have the money for the rest of the provisions that we need, but I'm not going to spend the money right away. Well, I can't actually, I'd have to recruit somebody instead. So we're not going to spend the money because we're going to recruit them later on when it's cheaper to do so. Or just have it happen naturally. Of course, there's also the option where the king just asks us for money, which I also thought of. But I'd rather do this now and get him to not bother us later when we have more money. So that actually makes him happy and it lowers the maximum tax rate that he can impose on us. Which means that we can be... Oh, hello. We were quite close to getting Jakku's Marquette. So yes, I would take the season Scout and the plus one movement and the double treasure from Ancient Ruins. That is wonderful. Your first job, Scout, is to go have a chat with this village here. See what they're up to. How's it going? You're... Oh, seriously? <laughs> Expert sugar planters. Wow. Okay. They need guns. I'm not going to sell them guns. They gave us a pearl necklace worth 864 gold. Wonderful. Farewell. Thank you for that fertility ritual in the moonlight. A stimulating experience. Yep, the quotes at the villages are pretty funny too. So we'll have the scout come back. We'll get the caravel to take the scout somewhere else here in a few seconds. We've got some more experience on a caravel. I think we might have spawned in a shipwreck. I don't know. I don't know where that experience came from. Anyway, we're going to take Sea Explorer, which gives him double movement in favorable winds, which is a pretty nice boost from time to time. So that gives us, I think we have three and a half movement points instead of three. So let's offload these people. Let's onload the scout. Powder maker, we'll figure something out to do for you in a second. Let's send the caravel on its way towards the mainland, which is southwest. Now this powder maker, Let's have him chop some more wood, and that'll actually fix our little wood problem. So we've got the founding father that I want. Let's go ahead and let's switch over to the chapel. Unfortunately, we don't produce quite enough wood to keep up with our carpentry desires, but that's okay. Having the cabinet maker work as a carpenter is still a good thing. We're winning overall. Oh shit, I forgot. Uh, so we're unhappy now because we have two unhappiness from population size and one from crime. There is some crime because of our full storage and we don't have any law production. So I need to actually pull out the powder maker because we also went up to five population, but I didn't have a defender. People will get upset. So I need to actually establish guards. So the guards will provide law and they'll also pro provide some happiness, which is very good. So we need a temporary guard, which is gonna be the powder maker. You'll become a militia. That'll fix the law might fix the unhappiness, I'm not sure. 
That'll stop them from getting all pissed off and revolting and refusing to do any work. Alright, we're almost ready to insert the... What the hell is this? Why can I not enter that? Oh, it's a pearl reef. Well, let's mark that. So those pearls here, they're hard to see. They're like these pinkish things. The best thing that I can do for pearls is to turn on the yield display and then just check the coastline. And then check to see if there's any like hidden pearls or pearl reefs that are just so freaking hard to see. Like the ones that are marked at the resource, that's easy. Easy peasy. But their reefs, that's actually hard. It's that little bit of pink right there. It's very hard to see, especially like when you're zoomed out. And if you turn on the show all resources, they don't get marked. So it's it's a it's like a ter it's a terrain feature. It's not like a resource resource. Let's go ahead and I can't actually get in right there. I can't attack this friggin' whale either. You can hunt the animals for money. It's not a lot of money, but it is something. We have 936 gold, which means that we could hurry one of these people. I actually want to hurry the indentured. Oh, do I want to wait? Let's go ahead and wait. The king asked for money pretty recently. It's pretty unlikely that he's going to ask for money soon. Oh, uh, we're going to need a second settler really fast now that I think about it. Oh, no, we'll be alright, actually. The event where you buy a half price galleon will come up whether your treasures can reach your city or not. So let's dump this scout right here and let's have a chat with this village. They're expert peat and clay cutters. That's not bad. They need guns. I don't care. So I think we've got some experience. One of our young warriors seeks glory in battle. So he'll fight shoulder by shoulder with us. All right. This country is going to be my home now. Can anywhere really be home? In Scotland and Ireland, our landlords believe there is more profit without the people. Yeah, a lot of them do, it seems like. Let's grab this campfire first. I want to see what's in here. Usually you get a person. We got a slave overseer, which will actually increase the productivity of the slaves. 20% higher, but he has two of those promotions, so 40% higher productivity of slaves and other enforced labor. So that's pretty good. Oh, he gave us a native mercenary. That's awesome, dude. So now I can take the native mercenary, which is a really, really, really good unit. They have like fantastic strength bonuses for dense terrain. And they're as strong as like a regular colonial militia in terms of strength. They have eight strength. Braves, native braves have five strength. Let's put you onto the ship. We're just passing through. Thank you very much. Put you on the ship and the ship will go back pretty much immediately. So we have another little picture here that is using the whip. First you snatch these poor creatures from their homes and families and bring them to the new world in deplorable conditions. And now you hire an overseer who will whip the slaves into working? Have you no conscience at all? Surely your productivity will increase considerably, but at what price? There is still a way back. The Lord may forgive you if you abandon your plan and use the overseer elsewhere. Yeah, I'm not a big, uh, not a big proponent of using slaves in this mod. If you get the right units, you can make them quite powerful, like nearly as powerful as like experts. But I don't think you can ever get them more powerful than an expert. But maybe you can. Maybe you can. Maybe you can get like three slave overseer promotions. Let's go ahead and let's actually check that real quick. That's, there is actually a third slave overseer promotion, so if you can get experience on your overseers, you can get that somehow. And we got some experience on our scout from Little Goody Hut. Let's grab Explorer 1 for minus 1 terrain movement cost, and Explorer 2 for plus 1 visibility range. What I like to do with scouts is I like to do the Explorer promotions, and then Veteran 1, and then the Forced March promotions. That reduces the terrain cost to a minimum. And it also gives them more movement and more visibility range, which makes them absolutely amazing explorers. Let's drop off the native merc and the overseer. Let's have them post up. Now, there are limits to the number of units that you can have inside a city in terms of military as well as naval ships, which is based on your harbor. So your harbor for a basic colony with no pier, it has four harbor spots. A caravel takes up two, a galleon takes up six, that kind of thing. There's also barracks. Barracks is based on your your walls, basically. There might be another building that increases it, I'm not sure. But I think it's mostly based on your defensive walls. So right now we have four barracks slots, which means that our colonial militia, native mercenary, and slave overseer, they each take up one, so we have three full. We only have one more spot left. 
However, this master powder maker, I might make him stand down. I don't want him to be a soldier. I have other people to do that job right now. I'd rather he do something more productive with his life, which in this case is going to be producing more lumber. We now have zero happiness in terms of being positive or negative. Our law is fine because of our guards stationed in the city. Everything's good. Our food's all good. Our health is still at plus one. We're at a max of 10. As long as we don't go into like a zero here for the one or a negative one, etc., then we'll be good. We'll stay at 10. We need to go ahead and send some goods back. So let's send the sugar back. And we also need to go pick up some more provisions and some people to, sc to start scouting harder. We really want to scout as hard as we can. And to do that, I'm going to spend this turn definitely going to Europe. I just want to explore a little bit more to squeeze out some efficiency out of those movement points. Let's check out these ancient ruins over here. Oh, or the mixed tech. This is a pretty advanced society, I believe. They're prosperous, they're people, and they're raiders. So the mixed tech will be another colony, or some natives, I mean, that we'll be interacting with. Them being pupils, I think that means that they can train us faster. Yeah, so pupil is actually 150% faster native conversion rate from missions. So if we ever wanted to use our missionaries to build missions, we'd want to make them over in the mixed tech. They're also prosperous, which gives them double gold when villages are captured. They get plus five food flat in every colony. They also get Minuteman, so they have better defenses for their colonies. They get more silver, gold, and gems in all settlements, and a free native wall, which gives them even more defense. So that's pretty good. That's very good for them, actually. That makes us much less, that makes us much less, less likely to attack them soon, at least until we can get strong enough that these things don't matter, which isn't that hard. You can pull it off. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult than a regular native. They're also raiders, so their promotions are cheaper, and they have a plus 10% bonus on all their units which makes them even harder to deal with. <laughs> let's uh, let's check out this ancient ruin first, because I can get the money immediately, and then we'll talk to the village on the next turn. We do have 1,794 gold. I'd like to start getting another ship at some point in time, or better yet, figuring out another set little, settle location here pretty soon. I'm thinking somewhere over here. I want to have access to the pearls, because pearls generate gemstones basically or gems and those sell for 24 gold each those are really good you need expert pearl divers to maximize your output though so i could settle on this tile right here that would have access to big ships and by the way remember the shallow coast you want to watch oh shit <laughs> oh my goodness did i not mention shallow coast i didn't even think about it oh uh, yeah, so the, the light blue coast is shallow coast. Big ships cannot enter it. I don't think I mentioned it. I think I did mention it earlier. So, pearly gates cannot be entered by any kind of big ship. That's not a big deal. That just means that nothing larger than a merchant man can go in and out of pearly gates. We'll have to have a place where your uh, galleons can go in and out. Although, get, treasures can get under galleons one way or another. But we do need our future colonies to have access to the proper large ships, especially if they're going to say build large ships. But yeah, I didn't even check here. So this location is perfect in every single way, basically, except for each one of these tiles is shallow coast. Goodness. I mean, it's not a bad thing. That means that we can't get bombarded by ships either. So our defenses will never go down from a ship. They can only get siege down from actual artillery. So that's a good thing. Anyway, we've got some money to spend. I think it's time to bury some of that money. Or we could wait. We have five turns remaining until the caravel arrives. The king, I don't think he's very likely to ask us for money, so it should be alright. And we could have a quest come up that asks for money. And we do want to keep some money on hand. More money as time goes on, of course. So let's talk here. They're peanut planters. They need colored cloth. Colored, colored cloth. Well, colored cloth is kind of hard to get, but we'll think about it. Let's go into the peak here to get some better vision, and then we'll hit up the ancient ruin and keep going along the coastline. We got a native slave out of that interaction. Oh, I didn't read the uh, the quote. Oh. 
Uh, that's too bad. Let's send the slave up to the village up here. We're not going to be going to war with the Carib anytime soon, but chances are that we will eventually kill them. I don't want to fight the mixed tech because they're actually pretty damn good. Plus, if we establish missions with them, we'll get a lot more converts faster. Actually, faster than like a French mission where would in a regular native village. Got some more experience, let's move on towards the northeast. I won't be detailing all of my scouting later on in the game, but in this early part of the game, I do want to show like how I'm kind of choosing to do things and at least talking about which directions I'm sending the scouts. I really don't believe in automating your exploration in any of these games. Like there's way too much to think about. Like which direction do I want to go based on? What do I think is in that direction? What kind of climate might be in that direction? What is there any coastline? Are there other potential enemies, etc. So let's go for veteran one, and then we'll be going for the forced march promotions. I could try attacking this, but there's almost no chance I'll have victory, so I'm just going to move on. And there's a pretty good chance I'm going to lose the scout entirely, which I would not want to do because if the scout dies, we lose thousands upon thousands upon thousands of gold that that scout would have made. Scouts, scouts are like the best unit in the game based on the assumption that you have a decent amount of land to explore like there aren't a whole bunch of other competitors taking up all the land but even then the sooner that you do it the more that you get money early and if you get money early you start your snowball really fast like scouts pay for themselves so many times over especially on big maps Anyway, we finished chapel in the pearly gates, so let's swap our firebrand preacher over. He's going to produce four crosses, which is actually not better than a expert missionary could do, I found out recently. So at the chapel, well, only at the chapel, I think, I think at the upgrade, firebrand preachers are better. But at the chapel, the missionary produces a positive three crosses on top of his normal production, so he makes five, two from the chapel building slot three from himself but the preacher only doubles cross production so he gets four not five so he gets two times two which is four he also is a better medic that's interesting too huh we're gonna switch the powder maker up to the northwest but most of his work is well all of his work is good what the issue is is the cabinet maker is again not having anything to do so i'm gonna put him back on to let's have him start doing horses actually no, no, we want stuff built. Let's do lumber and we'll go back and forth. So next up, what we're going to build, we could build a pier, but building a pier, the main use would be to like sell treasures directly to Europe, but we will never do that by the way. What we're going to do instead is we're going to build a village hall, I think. We could get more food on the water tiles from the pier, but we're okay at the moment. I think we want to go for a village hall first. That'll give us more culture per turn. Pretty sure, pretty sure. So we built our first church in the new world and thus done a pious work. Remember that the fear of God knows neither measure nor modesty. So we are challenged to be the first governor to build five abbeys. The Lord will be grateful and his majesty will surely offer an earthly reward as well. We'll see what happens. I might actually do that quest for once. Normally I don't spend a lot of time on crosses, but I'm now coming around to them now that the mod has made it so the crosses are more valuable in the long term instead of becoming worthless as time goes on. We do have 2,232 gold remaining. The ship will arrive in one turn. Let's just wait. I don't think the king is going to ask for money. Let's cross our finger fingers and let's gamble. Come on, baby. No, we don't know yet. If I leave the screen, the king might ask for money. We've also arrived at a perfect time. So let's sell the sugar. And we only have one cross remaining on immigration. So we can get the cheapest choice of a specific specialty. At least the ones that are available to us. I want the indentured servant because he makes more lumber. I want him to get on my ship and then I want some provisions to turn somebody into a scout because I can't buy another ship I don't have enough money. I think I bought let's risk it for the biscuit all right no king asking us for money. I have 51 provisions I need nine more provisions to equip scouts. Sounds good to me. So that'll be a tiny amount of provisions taking up a slot, but I do want to save up money for a very, very specific reason. 
Or I could just buy more provisions, but I'm not going to be able to grow enough horses for the next scout, which is true. I think I might be better off just equipping the next scout here in Europe, which would be a cost of what, actually? 2,130 gold. Could just do it right now. I could make this guy the scout, but I want him for lumber. Let's make him the scout now, and then we should be able to also buy some more provisions.